find that in the long run, you become much, much happier, much more satisfied, much more confident of the future than even if you're successful in acquiring material sense gratification. I mean, look at all these rascals who became practically uh, gods of a particular country or something like that, you know, like Saddam, right? Saddam Hussein in Iraq. He could get anything he wanted. He could kill anybody he wanted any way that he wanted. Uh, and this is considered to be very great power and sense gratification. But guess what happened? In a few days, he was overthrown, kicked out, arrested, thrown in jail, and hanged. Huh? Or maybe that was one of his doubles. Who knows? But anyway, the point is, no one can stay in a condition or position of material sense gratification in this material world. The qualities of the material world are always revolving, one competing for supremacy with the other, then sooner or later the mode of ignorance comes and overwhelms them all, and then we're finished. And we have to go on to the next body. So why don't we just make the next body a body in the spiritual world? In the spiritual world, there's no lack of anything. There's no problems. There's no death, no old age disease, no, no problems of any kind. So if we uh, simply adopt this devotional service process, we can easily be promoted to Vaikuntha. Uh, it's more difficult to be promoted to Goloka, but even that is accessible through this devotional service process. Uh, we have only to take it up seriously for a short time, just a few years. Uh, for a few short years, just give up sense gratification and do your duty in Krishna consciousness. And then you get everything. So uh, this is the real solution to the problems of material life. Next is residing in a sacred place. In the Skanda Purana, it is also said that for a person who has lived in Dwaraka for six months, for one month, or even for one fortnight, there is awaiting elevation to the Vaikuntha Lokas and all the prophets of Sarupya Mukti, the privilege of having the same four-handed bodily features as Narayan. In the Brahma Purana, it is said, the transcendental significance of Purushottama Kshetra which is the 80 square mile field of Lord Jagannath, cannot be properly described. Even the demigods from higher planetary systems see the inhabitants of this Jagannath Puri as having exactly the same bodily features possessed by one in Vaikuntha. That is, the demigods see the inhabitants of Jagannath Puri as being four-handed. When there was a meeting of great sages at Naimisharanya, Sutta Goswami was reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, and the importance of the Ganges was stated as follows. The waters of the Ganges are always carrying the flavor of Tulsi offered at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna, and as such, the waters of the Ganges are ever flowing, spreading the glories of Lord Krishna. Wherever the waters of the Ganges are flowing, all will be sanctified both externally and internally. Uh, recently we had uh, some posts on our forum asking about the power of Ganges water. And this uh, Ganges water is so special, it's so powerful, so pure, that the, the British used it in their warships uh, because they had to sail all over the world. And of course, sailing ships go very slowly. So they had to carry their water, fresh water, with them. And the British used only Ganges water because Ganges water never goes bad. Other kinds of water from other sources, eventually, if you, if you put it in a barrel and put it on a ship, <laughs> it'll eventually go bad and become undrinkable. But Ganges water never decays like that. Uh, it's eternally pure. Similarly, anyone who takes bath or drinks Ganges water they also become purified. However, this process of purification takes some time. It takes a few years. However, by chanting the holy name, one gets the same purification immediately. 
So chanting the holy name is even more powerfully purifying than uh, the waters of the Ganges. Uh, therefore, we advise everyone to take up this process of chanting as much as possible. Next is accepting only what is necessary. In the Narada Purana, it is directed, one should not accept more than necessary if he is serious about discharging devotional service. The purport is that one should not neglect following the principles of devotional service, nor should one accept the rulings of devotional service which are more than what he can easily perform. For example, it may be said that one should chant the Hare Krishna mantra at least 100,000 times daily on his beads. 100,000 is uh, 64 rounds. But if this is not possible, then one must minimize his chanting according to his own capacity. Generally, we recommend our disciples to chant at least 16 rounds on their japa beads daily, and this should be completed. But if one is not even able to chant 16 rounds, then he must make it up the next day. He must be sure to keep his vow. If he does not strictly follow this out, then he is sure to be negligent. That is offensive in the service of the Lord. If we encourage offenses, we shall not be able to make progress in devotional service. It is better if one fixes up a regulative principle according to his own ability and then follows that vow without fail. That will make him advanced in spiritual life. Okay, spiritual life is like the race between the tortoise and the hare. Okay. The tortoise wins. Why? Because the hare keeps going off in this direction and that direction. Even though he's very fast, he's not consistent. Whereas the tortoise is slow but steady. And slow but steady wins this race. Uh, especially over time. There were so many devotees who were very passionate, a very strong mind, and they approached Srila Prabhupada and apparently, externally, they made very quick advancement. But where are those devotees today? Are they engaged in pure devotional service? No, they're like working at a job somewhere, not preaching, not following regulative principles. So what to speak of the devotees who were fortunate enough to approach Srila Prabhupada. Uh, there are so many devotees in India who, although they're apparently very strict and advanced and following all kinds of scriptures and devotional service uh, processes, they can't maintain over a longer period of time. And so they periodically fall down and become engaged in nonsense activities, and then they have to correct themselves, and they waste so much time. So one has to understand what he is capable of doing as a steady routine practice over a long span of time and not take on more obligations of service than he can easily maintain. Because you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. Huh? So what is, the, what is the minimum that you can maintain even on a bad day? That's what you should make your standard. Then as you advance in devotional service, you should gradually raise your standard. If you try to, to chant 64 rounds right away, you'll just fall down and give yourself a lose. And then you'll feel bad. And that will ruin your enthusiasm in devotional service. So uh, if you can chant four rounds even on a bad day, then make that your standard. But, you know, if you're having a good day and you can chant 16 rounds, then by all means do so. The thing is, that's, you look at that as an extra rounds, huh? that your regular duty is four rounds. Now, four rounds is not going to qualify you for initiation. Huh? The 16 rounds is the minimum standard for initiation. But don't take initiation based on a false standard and then fall down. It's better to wait until your actual advancement equals the standard for initiation. Uh, Srila Prabhupada waited over 15 years before he took initiation from his spiritual master. So just see, that was Srila Prabhupada. 
Uh, we had many instances of devotees taking initiation from Srila Prabhupada after only six months. But nobody can really know uh, after such a short time what they can maintain in the long run. So it's better to take it easy, wait at least a year for initiation. Uh, I mean, it's nice if we can make a quick advancement, but not if it's also followed by a quick fall. <laughs> uh, similarly, one should accept only what is necessary in terms of income, in terms of facility, in terms of what is actually necessary for his devotional service. If you try to collect too much money, if you try to get too much power or too much of anything, it will ruin your devotional service. So just accept the minimum, whatever is necessary for maintaining your devotional life, and that'll be good. The next principle is observing fasting on Ikadashi. 